Hey, my friend, God bless you. Welcome to the One YouTube channel. You're getting ready to hear a dynamic message that's going to bless you richly. I'm Pastor Torre, and uh, on behalf of myself, my wife, Pastor Sarah, our incredible ministry team, we're just glad that you're here and you're connected to us. And we want you to stay connected really quickly. There's two ways that you can do that. One is turn on your notifications. We want you to know every time we're going live, every time something powerful and edifying and encouraging is coming through. So turn on your notifications, click subscribe. And if you want to support this ministry that's doing great work all around the world, not just spiritually, but even practically, there are instructions on how to do so here. And last but not least, if you haven't read my latest book, Balance, if you don't have it in your life, you're missing out. It's changing lives all over the world. And you can go to thebalancebook.com and get that book and be a part of the thousands of people whose lives have already been changed by this great work. Now, speaking of great work, here comes the word. I'm so glad you're here. Enjoy. You know, I've been studying, and I really do believe that there is a special word for all of us in this season. And I only have one scripture. It's in Joshua 6, verse 20. It's not unfamiliar. Most of us know the story about the Hebrews marching around the walls of Jericho and how the walls of Jericho came down after they completed a few circles. That's my subject for today actually is full circle, full circle. And verse 20 simply says, so the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Spirit of the living God, we welcome you. We welcome you into the deepest parts of our souls. We welcome you into every corner of our house, every nook and cranny of our car. Father, we welcome you into this work atmosphere. What we're saying simply, Father, is that we want you to have your way wherever we are. And so, Father, it is my prayer that this would be a moment where you sit and you meet with your sons and daughters, that you would give them a word that is so custom tailored to where they are and what they need, that they have no doubt that you see them and that you hear them. And as for me, Father, I ask that you would just give me the tongue of the learned, that this would be a prophetic moment, Father, that echoes throughout the earth and that you would flow through me freely with no inhibitions. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You know, as I was studying and looking over my notes for this message, I couldn't help but think about how God uses circles. I thought about how the earth rotates in one full circle and that's how we have a new day, or how it rotates around the sun and then we have a new year. I thought about how God uses a wedding ring and the wedding ring symbolizes how two have become one, or even a woman's womb to produce new, a new child. And it is evident in that moment that a new life has begun. God uses circles. He uses full circle moments that allow us to birth new life or to birth victory. The newness that we experience often comes as a result of us having a revolution. We have these full circle moments. You hear them all the time, and these aren't even necessarily spiritual people or spiritual moments when they say this is a full circle moment. Uh, a full circle moment is when a version of you experiences something that transpired when a lesser version of you existed. I don't know about you, but when a graduate walks across the stage, it's a full circle moment. When I came into this school, I didn't have any credits, and now I am graduating and going off into the world. It is a full circle moment. I completed something that I started. I was looking up this definition, and the definition says that a full circle is a series of developments that lead back to the original source, position, or situation, or to a complete reversal of the original position. I had a full circle moment the other day when I was at home. 
You know, I have this podcast, and on my podcast, I always ask those who are listening, like, are you drinking your water and minding your business? And we giggle and hee-hee over drinking your water and minding your business, so much so that we even have, like, mind your business ministries. It's funny. It's hilarious. Until the other day, I was making dinner for my daughter, and I asked her, did she finish eating her vegetables? And she told me to drink my water and mind my business. Full circle moments. Now, there has been a complete reversal on mind your business ministry she was just a member and I was the president but she said it like she was the president of mind your business ministries and I was a new member I didn't appreciate that at all these full circle moments happen to us all of the time and I know that even as a mother that even to become eligible for motherhood we undergo a cycle a process that makes us eligible to even live within a full circle moment And these moments, they happen all of the time, but for the sake of our conversation today, I want to offer you a definition of a full circle moment. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. A full circle moment is when the divine you finishes what unbelief started. A full circle moment when the divine version of who you are completes something. Me ministering right now, me preaching right now is a full circle moment. Around six years ago, I was preaching here in Los Angeles for the very first time on a Sunday on Mother's Day. And I was nervous and I was anxious and I wasn't sure what would come of that moment. And here we are six years later and God has produced ministry from the inside of me that literally was a part of what started six years ago on Mother's Day. This is a full circle moment. And my unbelief tried to tell me that it wasn't possible. And my unbelief tried to tell me that I couldn't do it, but my belief stood in and finished it. It brought it into a full circle moment. And what I am learning now is that when you are a believer, when you start living this life of circles and cycles, that it produces perpetual full circle moments. So when I was speaking six years ago, that was a full circle moment because I never thought that I would be preaching. And now we are six years later and I'm standing in another full circle moment because I didn't know that this version of me existed six years ago. You see, belief and unbelief both produce cycles, but there comes a moment when we allow our belief to step in. And when our belief steps in, it creates a new cycle. I want to talk about the cycles that belief and unbelief create. Let's start with unbelief. Unbelief creates a cycle. Unbelief leads to wondering. I'm thinking of the children of Israel who didn't believe that God was going to take them into the promised land. They had unbelief that it even existed, and so they ended up wondering. But wondering leads to distraction. That same story, then they start making false idols and false gods in the middle of the wilderness because I started off with unbelief. Now I am wondering. Then I go from wondering to having distractions. There's a process. There's a cycle. That's why the enemy will always be after our belief. I'm thinking of the serpent in the garden. He came after Eve's belief because all the enemy ever has to do is get you to believe something differently. All depression has to do is make you believe something different. Anxiety makes you believe something differently. It makes you, makes you start weighing all of these different possible outcomes and issues. And so that unbelief makes your mind start wondering. And then your wondering leads to distraction. And distractions lead to desperation. Because now that we are distracted, we become desperate to be distraction. I love that word, distraction. We are distracted. We are no longer attracted to what we should have been attracted to. We are distracted from it. And whenever you are pulled away from what you are supposed to be pulled towards, you end up becoming desperate because there's a part of you that knows I shouldn't be in this situation. I shouldn't be distracted from my purpose. I shouldn't be distracted from my marriage. And now I'm desperate for something to fix me. I'm desperate for something to heal me. I'm desperate for something to make me feel that magnetic pull that I am on the right path, that I am a good person, that I'm doing what is necessary. And when we become desperate, desperation leads to defeat. Unbelief has a cycle. Belief also has a cycle. 
I want to talk about the cycle of belief because what we're going to witness here with the children of he- children of Israel, these Hebrew children, is what happens when the cycle of belief takes over what unbelief started. Belief leads to obedience. When you believe God, you start obeying what he said. When you believe that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, it ought to change your actions. It ought to change the way you respond when something is happening in your world. You start forgiving even when forgiveness is a stretch for you because you recognize, I believe what God says. I believe that in order for me to overcome that, I'm going to have to address some of my issues. You start getting aggressive about what's keeping you from laying hold of what God has for you. Belief leads to obedience obedience leads to faith faith leads to confidence so when i am obedient now i am obedient because i have faith that what god said is going to be manifested we aren't just obedient because we just are obedient we are obedient because we recognize that our faith is in within reach when we are obedient sometimes people are praying for things but they aren't obedient to the word that is going to lead to the thing that they're praying for there's a disconnect between what you believe in your faith is it your obedience are you actually doing and becoming who God has called you to be in order for you to lay hold of that faith that you need for the next dimension. And when you manifest faith, when you start to recognize that now I have a rhythm of believing, I have a rhythm of obeying, and now my faith is manifesting things that I should have never manifested. I should never have been walking in this room. I should have never been having these types of discussions, but I had faith. And now my faith makes me confident. I love that. And I feel like there's something on that for somebody. You're confidence. Your confidence is a result of your faith. When you have seen God show up over and over and over again, you start to become confident in what God says, that if God sent me into this room, if God sent me into this marriage, if God sent me into this school, he sent me into this business, it's because he has work for me to do. And when you see that work being manifested and effective, there's nothing like finding out you are effective. When you recognize that you are effective at the thing that God has called you, you to do it makes you confident that you can do the very next thing that he calls you to do I may not be confident in my own ability but I am confident in the call connected to who God has called me to be my confidence is not built on what I can do my confidence is not built on what I can say that type of confidence falls off very easily my confidence is built off the history that I have of God calling me into places that made me uncomfortable calling me into places that made me feel inadequate and then showing me that he called me there for a purpose. Now I'm confident whenever he calls me into a room and the room seems bigger than me, he calls me into a relationship and the relationship makes me feel like I am less than. I'm confident though because I'm standing on a word. When you're standing on a word, it changes the way you show up. When you're standing on a word, it changes the way you love. It changes the way you embrace. It changes the way you connect. I'm confident because I'm standing on the evidence of what God has already already done. See, all it takes is one step. When you take one step in the direction of what God has called you to do, it makes you confident because you start to see that every time I step, he was upholding me. Every time I took a step, he was going ahead of me and making that crooked path straight. So now the next time he calls me, I'm not confident because the technology is in place. I'm not confident because the money is there. I'm not confident because the relationships are there. I am confident because the word that sent me has never failed. I dare you to get a rhythm of belief in your life because that rhythm of belief will make you bold as a lion. You'll start doing things that you're not even qualified to do. You'll start signing up for things that you have no business doing because you recognize who sent you. I feel like prophesying to somebody watching this message right now that God is calling you again. God's calling you to start a new circle and you don't understand right now that there's a full circle moment. All you're doing is stepping out on what God said, but I hear God say, if you step out, I'll handle the full circle moment if you step out that it'll set that cycle in motion it's time for somebody to start believing again it's time for somebody to start having faith again it's time for you to recognize that the very thing you're standing on is evidence that God has already gone ahead of you you see there are some people who shouldn't even be watching this message right now but God brought them into a season of their life where they had no choice but to trust him and when they had no choice but to trust them and built their confidence up because he showed them that I'm worthy of your trust. I'm worthy 
of your creativity. I'm worthy of your innovation. I'm standing on the confidence that God is who he says he is and that he will do whatever he says he will do. And if he sent me, I cannot lose. If he sent me, I cannot break. And that is why confidence, confidence leads to victory. Confidence leads to victory. The kind of crazy victory that makes you say, even when I lose, I win. That even if it doesn't turn out the way that I want it to, there was a lesson connected to it that I could have never got unless I started the cycle in the first place. You got to watch out for people who don't accept losses. You got to watch out for people who don't accept defeat. I see a win in everything. I may have lost the money, but I gained the knowledge. I may have lost the relationship, but I gained my confidence. I don't eat no L's around here. 2020 passing out L's. I'm taking every L and turning it into a win. I'm taking the time off and learning how to create. I'm taking the time away from family and learning who I am. I don't accept any L's. I only do wins because I recognize that God wouldn't put me in this season of my life and birth me in this year unless there was victory connected to it. So I'm looking for victory. Everyone else can focus on defeat. Everyone else can wonder how we're going to fail. I have one job and one job only, and that job is to walk in this season with confidence that if God put me in it, then there's victory connected to it. I want you to take a minute in the comments and start looking for your victory. Just type victory, 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 victory. You're typing it, but God is prophesying it over your life. You're typing it, but God is prophesying it over your finances. Victory, 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 victory. Victory, 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 victory. My confidence, my confidence leads to victory. And so it is no wonder when we see these Hebrew children going up against the walls of Jericho, that they're walking a little bit differently than I think we've given them credit for in our sermons in the past. You see, these are not just any regular old Hebrew children. These are the ones who survived after those who did not believe died off. You see, there's something special about people who can maintain their belief in an environment of unbelief. That's a word for somebody. You're the only one in your environment, the only one in your family, the one, only one in your friend circle that believes. And you're wondering, is it possible for you to maintain your belief in an environment of unbelief? This story is evidence that the unbelief will eventually die off so that the only thing that can stand is the belief. And the Hebrew children are standing in a full circle moment because this is the moment where they are gonna be able to respond differently than the generation before them responded. When God sent a word to the generation before them, their unbelief disqualified them from seeing what God said. But this is the generation that believed. So while they're looking at this moment against Jericho, they're not looking at it like they're outnumbered. They're not looking at it like the odds are against them. They're looking at it recognizing that this is an opportunity for me to prove my faith. I'll never forget one of the first opportunities that I had to come into agreement with someone about healing. And there was a part of me that wondered, am I going to have enough belief so that this person can be healed? But there was another part of me that had been laying into what God had said. And I'd been praying and I'd been reading my word and eating my word and just really being in the presence of God. And what I recognize is that our faith needs an opportunity to put to be put to the test. Our faith needs an opportunity to be thrown in the direction of something that seems bigger than us. Sometimes we store up our faith for a rainy day. And I hear God saying that your faith isn't for a rainy day. Your faith is for every day. That there ought to be something in your life every day worthy of you throwing your faith at it. I'm throwing my faith at my healing. I'm throwing my faith at my health. I'm throwing my faith at my business. I live with my faith every single day. I'm not storing it up unless I get a 
it until I get a bad doctor's report, and then I'll release my faith. My faith is a part of my everyday life. And so when life makes a demand on my faith, I don't have to wonder how to use it. I don't have to wonder how to exercise it because I've been using it every single day. What if your faith is a muscle and you are so busy living in the comfort of what you understand and the comfort of what you can deal with that when faith calls, you don't even know how to apply faith because you are only going to use it if the worst happened. I hear God saying that when you stop storing up faith as if the worst thing is going to happen and start incorporating faith into everything you do, every single moment of every single day of your life, then you are going to be in relationship with me and you are going to see the promises that I have connected to your name. This is a full circle moment for the Hebrews. Now, I was thinking to myself when I was studying this text, part of what I like to do was just imagine this moment. If I were in this moment, what, the, what this moment would feel like and look like for me. And when I was looking at this moment, there was a few things that stood out to me, and I want to share them with you. One of the first things that stood out to me is that when I was looking at this text, I thought to myself, the children of Israel are finally in the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. And I reasoned with myself that there should have been something about them being in the promised land that should have brought rest to them, where they shouldn't have to have fight anymore. They shouldn't have to fight anymore. They went through the wilderness. They survived the Egyptians. The promised land was supposed to be a place of rest in my mind. And that's when I realized that my mind is wired to look for a destination where I can just finally stop fighting, not recognizing that every promise even has a battle connected to it. And so when I saw that they were up against another battle, it stands to reason to me as I was studying that just because you're in the promised land doesn't mean you won't have any walking to do. God help me. I thought that the walking days of the children of Israel were over. That once they transitioned from the wilderness into the promised land that they could finally settle. But in order for them to take over Jericho, God tells them that I've given you this city, but the city is locked up. And the only way you can access the city is if you walk around the city once a day for six days and then seven times on the seventh day. I would have been tired of walking if I were them. I would have been tired of fighting if I were them. I would have been ready to finally sit back and relax in the promised land. But I recognize that that is my flawed way of thinking. And maybe you're like me, where you have this flawed way of thinking, where you're striving to get to this place where you don't have to walk anymore, where you don't have to fight anymore, where you don't have to hustle anymore. And I hear God saying that in order for you to manifest who I have called you to be, that you have to stop looking at the destination and and start looking at who you are on the inside. You see, they were in the promised land, but God had to reveal the promises that were in them. They were in the promised land, but there were still promises that were down on the inside of them. And the only way that they could release the promises that were down on the inside of them is if they could start working, like they knew that there were still promises left for them. I hear God saying that you think the promised land is a place where there is a promised land. And I hear God saying it's not just a promised land, but there are promises buried in the land that you made it into one element of the promised land but you're going to have to work a little bit harder to dig out the promises of that land stop waiting to get to one place and start digging recognizing that he that began a work in you still has work to do until the days of Jesus Christ there are promises in the promised land you finally got married but that marriage has promises buried in that marriage you finally made it to the city but there are promises buried in that city you finally got the house, but there are promises buried in that house. I hear God saying that only those who start digging for the promises connected to the promised land will recognize that I have called them to be warriors. You see, if they would have gotten there and just rested, they would have never realized that when an enemy comes, that God had given them authority to go up against the enemy. See, you need to have a little fight even in the promised land because the enemy will make you think that you made it to a promised land that you can't fight for. But when you learn how 
how to fight on the promised land. Nobody can run you out of what God called you to. Nobody can run you out of the industry that God has called you to, to called you to. And I hear God saying that the children of Hebrew had to get a little bit of fight down on the inside of them. So this was their moment where they got to prove to God that we are the believing generation. And I just need you to throw something in my direction that is worth me applying my belief to. And what they had to throw their belief in the direction of was going up against something that was bigger than them. The promised land still had work for them to do. And as I was looking, I was thinking if I were in Jericho and I saw these people walking around the city, there would have been a part of me that thought, there they go again, walking, walking around in circles. I feel this. There they go again, back in the same city. There they go again, walking around in circles. I want to talk to somebody who feels like their life is just one big circle, that they keep experiencing the same thing over and over again. And they've been pressing in and they've been following God, but from the outside looking in, it looks like I'm in the same situation over and over again. I get an idea, the idea is on fire for a minute, but the idea falls through. I have an, an opportunity, the opportunity looks like it's gonna work, but the opportunity doesn't lead to the promotion that I thought it was gonna lead to. From the outside looking in, it looks like they're going around in circles aimlessly. And I hear God saying, as I was studying this message, that one of the greatest errors that we make is that we insist on looking at our life from the outside in. I wonder what my life looks like from the outside in. I wonder what it looks like me walking around these circles and it doesn't look like I have victory and it looks like I'm going up against something that's bigger than me. I'm constantly looking at my life from the outside in. God says, if you really want to see where the change is, you got to start looking at your life from the inside out. You see, because every time the children of Israel, the Hebrew children, walked around the walls of Jericho, it wasn't about what they looked like from the outside. It was about who they were becoming on the inside, who they were becoming on the inside as they followed the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the presence of God, was someone who was getting enough courage and enough strength and enough strategy to trust God, even when it didn't make any sense. And I want to challenge somebody who's watching tonight to stop looking at your life from the outside in. I'm wondering what I look like to other people. I'm wondering what it looks like when other people see me going on this merry-go-round over and over again and start dissecting your life from the inside out to start asking God, but who did I come on that one revolution? Who did I become on that second revolution? And to start weighing your transformation, not by the change you see on the outside, but by the full circle moments you have on the inside. Things may look the same from from the outside, but on the inside, I got wiser. On the inside, I got stronger. On the inside, my relationship with God increased and got deeper and deeper than it had ever been before. God says that you don't think you're going to be promoted until your outside changes. And I hear God saying that your outside won't change until you see the promotions that have taken place on the inside. Those children of Israel walked around the walls of Jericho because they had a secret that no one understood but them. The secret was that they weren't just walking around aimlessly, that they were following the presence of God. They were following the Ark of the Covenant, and no one had to understand what was happening. It could look foolish or it could look repetitive to anyone else who was on the outside looking in, but when you have a word from God and you know you are following the presence of God, it doesn't matter what it looks like from the outside looking in. All that matters is what's happening on the inside of you, and I hear God saying that you feel like you've been going in circles. And I hear God saying it looks like circles, but they're actually full circles. That you're checking off some things that God needed to do down on the inside of you. And you haven't seen the impact of it on the outside yet. But just like in verse 20, there's going to be a moment when all of the things you were walking around starts to start bending in your favor. And everything you were walking around starts bending towards what God said it was going to be in the first place. God says you're frustrated walking in circles, not recognizing that I use circles 
cycles to birth new things. I use cycles to birth new things. It looks like a circle, but wait until that day comes when the trumpet finally roars and you recognize that there was a shout that was being developed down on the inside of you. Every time they followed the presence of God, it started perfecting their shout. God told them specifically, don't shout until you get to the seventh day in the seventh revolution on the seventh day and every time they walked around they knew I had to save my vocal cords I got to save my voice because there's going to come a moment when God makes a demand on my shout I hear God saying there are seasons to walk and there are seasons to shout and you want to shout in a season when you're supposed to be walking when you're supposed to be learning when you're supposed to be growing and I hear God saying that you're not going to be walking forever that there's going to come a moment when the trumpet sounds and when the trumpet sounds I want you to save your voice don't save it on the voice don't use your voice talking to naysayers don't use your voice trying to prove to everybody that you got a vision from God that you're following what God told you to do God said I'll worry about that you save your voice I hear God saying you've been talking and walking and sometimes all you can do is walk I'm saving my voice for when I get to where God is calling me to be. I'm saving my voice for when the book is finally finished. I'm saving my voice for when there's no other option but for me to release a sound that makes heaven come into alignment with earth. And when heaven comes into alignment with earth, everything standing in my way is going to start crumbling down. I hear God saying fear is coming down. You went to one therapy session and you're ready to give up. I hear God saying keep walking, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. Keep walking. The best testimonies, the best testimonies take time to perfect. The best testimonies, they take time to perfect. They don't happen overnight. You don't just wake up one moment and you've stepped into it. You got to walk this thing out. I hear God saying you want to give up because you got to walk again. But if you would keep walking and you would keep trusting and you would keep your eyes on the presence of God, the presence of God, God says, let the Ark of the Covenant go ahead of them. Let my presence go ahead of them so that they could stay focused on what was really leading them. They're going to have obstacles beside them. But if they can stay focused on what's leading them, then they won't get distracted. And that's when I recognize that they had the presence ahead of them and evidence underneath them. You see, you come to this stage in your life when you're walking on the promises of God and the presence of God is leading you. It doesn't make the obstacles disappear, but it changes what you focus on in the midst of the obstacles. You see, the enemy can trick people who haven't experienced a full circle moment yet. But your full circle moment leads to another full circle moment. So these children of Israel are walking in circles, but they're not just walking on anything. They're walking in the promised land that they had lost access to. God, I'm walking on a promise right now. I hope you never forget that some of you are so busy focusing on what you want to do next that you don't recognize you're standing on the promise of what God has already done. So if God is leading you and he's guiding you, don't become so consumed by the obstacles beside you that you miss out on the reality that the same God who put that promise under your feet is now leading you in this moment. I love this text because as I was studying, I couldn't even fully explain it. But I knew that God was doing something that involved full circle moments for some of you. That means that you're experiencing a full circle moment in your life that now a, a whole version of you, a divine version of you is back in a situation, but you see it differently than you saw it through your brokenness. And then there are others. And you are just now starting a new circle. God, I'm going out again. 
I'm starting my faith again. I'm putting my faith on something again. I'm, I'm stretching myself again. I'm growing again. I'm starting a new business. I've got this idea. I'm starting over again. And I hear God saying that there is a full circle moment connected to what you're starting right now in this moment. That definition that I gave you of a full circle is when the divine version of you completes what unbelief started. The divine version of the children of Israel, the Hebrews, are completing what unbelief started in their generation. As I was praying, I felt so strongly that God is calling you, yes, you watching, to complete in your generation what unbelief started in the generations prior to you. And I don't mean the kind of superficial belief that makes you start wishing for material things, but I'm talking about the type of belief that makes you tap into wholeness and who God has called you to be and sacrifice and surrender and obedience and manifestation of God's confidence so that you can have victory. That's exactly what we see happening in this text. And the reason why I believe it's important for us to get this message down in our soul is to recognize that when the Hebrew children experienced this victory, that when they finally came to a place where they released their shout into the atmosphere and the walls came down, that it wasn't over just because they shouted. The shout was the beginning of a new revolution because after they shouted, they then had to go into the city and they had to take the city. God didn't do it for them. They had to take the city. There were promises connected to the promised land, but they had to be willing to walk, shout, and take. I think that it's so important for us to recognize in any season of our life which category we're in. I'm in my walking season. I'm in my shouting season. And I'm in my taking season so that we can recognize the full circle moments when they come. What if you are living in a full circle moment, but we're so busy waiting for the next moment that we can't recognize that I'm already standing in the provision of God. I feel like God gave me one assignment and one assignment only. And that was to awaken you to how he uses circles and cycles to manifest his promise. And on a day like today, when it feels like Maybe we're in a new cycle of things. I don't know what the next is going to be. I hear God saying that what you start in this moment, he's going to finish. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for those of you who feel like you've been walking around in circles. And now you've been called to start a new revolution. I'm starting a new circle, Father, and I don't know who I'm going to become or how I'm going to make it out of this. I'm starting all over again. I almost wanted to start call this message starting all over again. But you're not really starting over again. You're starting in a new dimension of who you are. I wish if I was really creative and I could draw, I would make this full circle thing almost like a spiral that you complete a circle and you go to another level and it completes a circle and you go to another level and it completes another circle. But it's almost like you're starting over again if you don't zoom out of the picture and see that your life has been a series of full circles. Your life, friend, your life has been a series of full circles. Not going around in circles, a series of full circles. That means that God's not finished showing you how high you can go, how much you can grow, how deep you are, how wise you are, how prophetic you are, how anointed you are. Don't let the fact that you're going in circles make you feel so dizzy that you think you're not going anywhere at all. I hear God saying, I still called you. I'm still using you. But most importantly, I'm still advancing you. So stop looking at your life from the outside in. Start looking from the inside out. I'm not the same person who started this journey. 
I'm not the same person who started in that relationship. I'm not the same person who started in this industry. I know I may be in the same position. Maybe I'm in the same city. Maybe I haven't moved from the outside looking in, but from the inside looking in, I, from the inside looking out, I've made a lot of changes. I've made a lot of transitions. You will miss the best part of a person if you only look at them from the outside looking in. That's why God says, I look at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance. I want to be like God in my own life. I want to look at my life from the heart. I want to look at my life from the inside out. I don't want the bank account to determine whether or not I've progressed. I don't want the industry and, and a title to determine whether or not I have progressed. What I want to determine how I have progressed is who I am from the inside. And the fact that I can really hear from God. The fact that I can experience his presence, the fact that I can lift my hands and worship God. I'm not asking you to change my outside life anymore. That's too cheap of a prayer from a, for a God who can change my life from the inside out. God, I'm asking you to change me on the inside. That where there are areas of brokenness and deficiencies and discouragement and disappointment, that you would show me your power to create a full circle moment in my life. So you're watching this message and you're thinking to yourself, man, I feel like I've just been going in circles and going nowhere. I want to rebuke that spirit off of you. And I want you to become intentional about asking God to show you how he can develop you from the inside out where he can show you how to look at yourself the way that he looks at you with love and passion for you to grow and become so that you can become that person who has confidence and sees the victory in every season of life you're in. I've got the victory when I'm walking around the walls of Jericho. God hasn't even broken the walls down yet, but I have the victory because I'm following the presence of God. That's what my victory is in. My victory is in following the presence of God. And so I want to pray with you. You're watching this video, and you want to surrender to the circles. God, I want to surrender to what feels like my life being on repeat, playing the same song over and over again. And instead of asking you to change the song, I'm going to ask that you change the way I hear the song, that I won't miss the lesson of this soundtrack and this soundtrack of my life that I won't miss the lesson connected to this season of my life. I want you to lift your hands or cup your hands like you're gonna receive something. Because I believe that as you cup your hands, oh, I feel this for you, that God is gonna breathe on you like never before. Some of you right now, you're watching and you can already feel the presence of God. Your heart is warm and tingling. You feel his presence invading your atmosphere. If that's you, I want you to type real quickly, that's me, that's me, that's me, and then go back to cupping your hands. That's God's presence confronting your unbelief. Man, did you know unbelief and belief can live in the same person? Our job, like the father in Mark, is to say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. I want to start a new circle, but this circle, Father, this cycle, I don't want it to be a cycle of unbelief. I want it to be a cycle of believing with passion and power that you can transform my life from the inside, Father. Make me different from the inside. So, Spirit of the living God, I come into agreement with every person who has opened their heart and their spirit, Father for this newness that you're doing down on the inside of them. Father, it is my prayer that this word and that your presence is confronting the areas of their unbelief. That where they wonder whether or not they are a success or wondering whether or not they will break that generational curse, that your presence would sit right over that sore spot, right over that broken part, right over that anxious part. Father, let your presence begin to hover over them, Father. 
And as your presence hovered over the earth, Father, may you begin to call out what's down on the inside of them, Father. I want to call out in the name of Jesus. I want to call out gifts. I want to call out talent. I want to call out anointing. Father God, we open up our spirits, Father. No longer will we be walled up like Jericho. Father, let our walls come down so that we can see the treasures that you have placed down on the inside of us. Spirit of the living God, wherever there is a heart open and a soul ready to receive. May you begin to call out every antonym to the, de to the depression and the grief that they're facing, Father. May they have full circle moments over every part of their minds, full circle moments over every part of their spirits. Father, we repent for thinking that this was going to be the end. We repent, Father, for resenting the moments where we had to walk around in circles, not recognizing that you were going to use the circles to birth a new life, that you were going to use the circles to birth victory. So spirit of the living God, I prophesy victory where there is defeat. I prophesy life where the enemy has threatened death. I prophesy joy where there is depression. I prophesy full circle moments over marriages, full circle moments over children, full circle moments over heartbreak, that we're going to look back and you're going to bring us joy in the place where we once felt hurt, that you're going to bring us innovation in the place where we once felt a deficit. Father, we receive your perfect plan for our lives and we surrender to however many circles we have to go through to manifest what you've placed down on the inside of us. We lay our lives down, Father, and we say build us. Don't build a life. Don't build a bank account. Build us. Don't build a degree, Father. Build us. Don't build a business. Build us. And when you build us, Father, we will withhold nothing that your glory may be manifested down on the inside of us. Forgive us, Father, for complaining and murmuring. Forgive us for our unbelief. And we thank you and we worship you. We honor you, Father, that you hear our shout louder than you hear our unbelief. So, Father, when the time comes and our obedience has matured into manifestation, may we release a sound, Father, that lets every enemy know that we were not just walking around aimlessly, but we were walking around with the intention of victory that you foreknew when you formed us in our mother's womb. Father, receive this word. Receive our offering, Father, as we receive this word. Let it take root and let it produce fruit in our lives, generational fruit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.